today we are talking about the cerebrospinal fluid or the CSF fluid now uh, this video will tell you about what is CSF what are the functions of CSF uh, where is it formed what is the path of flow of CSF where is it absorbed what are the contents of CSF or what is the con composition and we'll talk about the CSF pressure before we get started it's important to know that the cranial cavity which is surrounded by the skull vault is composed of three main structures which is the brain the spinal cord and the CSF out of the total capacity of the cranial cavity which is around 1600 to 1700 milliliters CSF composes 150 milliliters CSF is basically a fluid that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord and it is present in the subarachnoid region or the subarachnoid space Uh, it has a pH of about 7.33 volume of 150 milliliters and it is responsible for performing some very important functions Self. the very first and the most important function is protection the brain and the CSF have a specific gravity which is almost the same the brain floats in CSF so any impact on the skull vault gets redistributed by the CSF and therefore it minimizes the impact that the brain experiences therefore it acts like a cushion to the brain the second function is that it is responsible for providing nutrition for removal of any metabolites or harmful materials that are produced in the brain during metabolism so excretion and responsible for maintaining homeostasis talk about the formation of CSF so most of the CSF which is about two-thirds is formed in the choroid plexus what is choroid plexus it is basically a cauliflower like growth that is present in the ventricles of the brain so it is present in the lateral ventricles in the third ventricle and in the fourth ventricle in the lateral ventricles it is present in the temporal horn in the third ventricle it is present in the posterior region and in the fourth ventricle it is present in the roof so in all these areas the choroid plexus is a growth that is present which is composed of abundant blood vessels which are surrounded by epithelial cells okay and this structure is responsible for formation of two-thirds 
of the CSF. Okay, so if this is your blood vessel here, and these are the epithelial cells. Uh, there is a channel in these epithelial cells that is responsible for active transport of sodium. Now as sodium passes from the blood into this cavity, it carries along with it the chloride ions and this increases the oncotic pressure in this cavity so therefore it pulls water along with it. So that is how CSF is formed. Okay, so now from this concept we know that CSF is basically composed of what? It has sodium, it has chloride, okay, and a small amount of potassium and glucose also is present in the CSF. Now what is important here is that CSF does not have any RBCs or WBCs and it does not have any proteins or it has a very low uh, composition of proteins. Okay, this is the composition here. Okay, so what I have here is a sagittal section of the brain. This is the lateral ventricle right here. Okay, this is the third ventricle. This is the aqueduct of Sylvius. This is the fourth ventricle here. This is the brain parenchyma. This is the skull vault here. And this is the arachnoid villi. And this is the cerebral. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about the flow. We know that it's uh, the CSF is produced in the lateral ventricle, in the third ventricle and in the fourth ventricle by a structure that is known as the choroid plexus, right? So, and most of it is produced by the lateral ventricles. So your CSF from the lateral ventricles enters the third ventricle through a foramen that is known as the foramen of Monroe. Okay, this is the foramen of Monroe. From the third ventricle, it passes through the aqueduct of Sylvius. Aqueduct of Sylvius into the fourth ventricle. Okay, right here. And from the fourth ventricle, there are two foramens. The foramen of Magindi, which is present in the medial wall of the fourth ventricle, and the foramen of Lushka, which is produced in the lateral wall of the fourth ventricle so this is easy to remember because Magindi is present in the medial wall and Rushka is present in the lateral wall Since the C, uh, CSF now enters the subarachnoid space so this is the subarachnoid space and it has entered this area and it travels all the way upwards here also and it reaches the arachnoid villi the arachnoid villi is where the absorption of CSF happens okay so we've come to absorption The absorption of CSF happens via the arachnoid villi, villi which are basically finger-like projections of 
the arachnoid matter or the arachnoid layer of the meninges like projections of the arachnoid and they these projections they're like valves and they allow the CSF to flow into the uh, venous sinuses so, so finally let's talk a little bit about the CSF pressure in a normal person in the horizontal or the lying down position the CSF pressure is 130 mm of water okay but it can go during absorption it's important to remember that these valves control the CSF pressure because the amount of CSF that is being produced is more or less constant in every individual so in case there's a rise in CSF pressure or an abnormality it is most probably because of defective absorption and why does that happen is because these valves that or the arachnoid villi that allow CSF to pass into the venous sinuses they open up only when the difference between the pressure in the subarachnoid region and the pressure in the venous sinuses uh, has a difference of at least 1.5 mm of Hg. So when the CSF pressure is 1.5 mm of Hg more than the pressure in the venous sinuses, that's when because of the pressure of the CSF, the valves open up and they allow uh, the CSF to flow into the venous sinuses. So let's talk about some pathological conditions that may present with a raised CSF pressure. Uh, it is important to remember that the CSF pressure remains constant in normal individuals and that's because the amount of CSF that is being produced, the volume of CSF that is being secreted by the choroid plexus, that remains constant. So in case that there is a raise in the CSF pressure, it is probably because of defective absorption in the arachnoid villi. And why would that happen? Like in case of infections and hemorrhage, uh, there is appearance of cells which are normally, they're not present in the CSF. So now there's inflammation, there's accumulation of cells in the CSF and these cause a blockage of the arachnoid villi. So because of the blockage of the villi, there is no absorption and that causes a raise in the CSF pressure. So that's only one mechanism but uh, what I'm trying to say here is that the CSF pressure is mainly controlled by the absorption in the arachnoid villi.